to boldly go where no one has gone before, competition or cooperation in space. A Chinese space pioneer has the answer right after this break. Welcome back. You're still watching World Inside with me, Tian Wei. Half a century ago, Neil Armstrong took one small step for a man on the moon, but a giant leap for mankind. It has been 45 years since a person set foot on the moon. On Monday, NASA announced a plan to put a rover on the moon by the year 2023. It will be a key intermediate step to achieve the goal of landing humans there by the year 2028. Earlier this year, China also made history by landing a rover on the far side of the moon for the very first time. While only one country's name appeared in the headlines, Chinese scientists stressed the fact that the mission involved lots of international cooperation. In the coming years, China is gearing up to send more missions to the moon and maybe even build an international moon village with partners around the world. Earlier, I talked to Wu Ji, the director of the National Space Science Center at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. He said collaboration is in the nature of space science. Professor Wu, what a pleasure to see you. It's my pleasure also. It's been years since our last time interview. Yes, sure. However, there has been enormous amount of development in the space science. Yes, we have been very busy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Professor Wu, one of the first questions I want to ask you is about the cooperation and the competition. As you may know, geopolitics these days have become the focus of attention. What about cooperation vis-à-vis -vis competition in the outer space from China's perspective? We have been uh, very open, uh, trying to be very open to all the partners, uh, particularly on space science. Uh, for space science, we are exploring uh, new uh, uh, nature laws, uh, discovering new phenomena in space. So uh, those kind of things are, you have it only, you can discover only once. So you cannot discover twice. So when you discover this uh, part of the uh, universe, and the other people will discover other parts. So we are trying to uh, not to be duplicate uh, in order to save the fund. Uh, each country has their own uh, budget, so it's always limited. But there are so many things to be discovered. So we have to discuss to each other, uh, between each other, what you are going to do, and I will try to avoid what you did, and I will do something else. So it, it's uh, very natural to uh, collaborate to each other, uh, negotiate uh, on or even joint missions together. So we have been doing this uh, since the uh, past uh, 20, 10 years. But, but you know, uh, Professor, the logic is easy to understand, right? I yes. mean, limited resources, why don't we work together? After all, it's our space all together anyway. Yes. But, you know, in reality, things are different. So I understand you've been working together with the European side yes. about data and some of the other areas. What exactly is the latest development in that area? We have uh, been uh, very actively talking to each other and uh, about uh, 20 years ago we have uh, selected uh, a joint mission called Double Star. Uh, we have, uh, China has launched two satellites with half of the science payload coming from Europe. And these two satellites, when, when it's after it's launched, it collaborating measurement together with a European mission called Cluster. So Cluster has four satellites, we have two. So all six satellites are running together in the geospace and measuring the space environment. So that was the first collaboration. And after that, we have uh, selected another mission uh, very recently. It's called SMILE. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's that a very, great. very nice name. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, we are taking image from far away of the Earth and of the, of the uh, plasma near the Earth. So this has never been done before. So when we, if we do this, we will find uh, the interaction between the solar wind and the magnetosphere or the magnetic field of the Earth. Mm -hmm. So there's an interaction. So when the solar wind is stronger, and this, uh, you will see some phenomena. So this is uh, really the first time we are taking image of that. Before it's only in situ measurement. Right. We, we have curves, but now we have image. 
So this mission is uh, very promising, and now it's under development. Right. But, you know, Professor, when you talk about cooperation, exactly what is the nature of this cooperation? Is it about funding? Is it about data sharing? Is it about research process? What exactly is this nature? There are many levels of collaboration. Tell me more about that. The lowest level is just exchange data. So we are exchanging some of the lunar exploration data with NASA. But that is no hardware collaboration. And if you go one step further, you have hard, hardware exchange. And we put our hardware on board of a European or foreign satellite. And they put their uh, payload or hardware uh, instrument on board of Chinese space missions. For example, in, lunar, uh, in our Chang'e 4, mm -hmm. our lunar lander on the far side of the moon, there are European payloads, there are European science, scientific uh, instruments. So this is a, a higher level. And uh, if you go even higher, then we will build a satellite together. So this is a SMILE. Uh, on the SMILE collaboration, we are building our part, and the Euro European part is built in Europe. So we will integrate these two parts together and launch it on a European uh, launcher right. in, wow, a, in a South American, which is KULU, which is the European Space Agency's launch site. I would assume with the latter kinds of cooperation, there has to be enormous amount of cooperation and communication between the two sides. How is it likely to be done on a daily basis? What is the nature of that? Yes, uh, when you have a, a very high level of collaboration, you need trust. You must uh, trust That's each other. That's the key other. word, isn't it? Yes, yes. You, so this uh, collaboration is not, uh, not just in one go. We had a double star collaboration. So they have their instrument on board of our satellite. So we built trust already. And in between these 10 years, we have a lot of uh, talks. And every year, we have a bilateral meetings. Mm -hmm. And so we, we select joint missions together. So SMILE was selected among uh, 10 uh, proposals. So we, we have trust before. And now when we build things together, we need a lot of collaboration. We need to talk. We have uh, uh, regular meetings, program meetings. And we have science meetings talking about the data. And uh, we need to coordinate the, the development pace. So when we, you know, if we go too fast, it's useless. And uh, if, if, if we go too slow, they go too fast, and we have to catch up. That's right. So all this has to be coordinated. Parallel and coordinated. Yes. But the question really is, when China and the Europeans are doing pretty well, according to you, yes. what about China and the United States? After all, these are the two largest economies in the world. There is something called geopolitics also, apparently, in play between the two countries. Yeah, I, I'm very sorry to say the current situation is not so good. Uh, there's a lot of blocks. Uh, like what? But because um, in the U.S., they consider space as a dual-used uh, technology, uh, even space science. Uh, they, they thought space science can be used for civil application and also can be used for defense. So they are so careful to, they, they, they thought they are more advanced, so they don't want to export their technology, uh, China can use the technology for defense. So this is a trust. So we have not built up a trust uh, like we between us and Europe. So U.S. is blocking uh, their export of both technology, uh, hardware, and even knowledge. I've been talking to some of the American space scientists as well. They are so eager to yes. work with China. Yes. They are so in love with their Chinese counterparts that's, too. That's right, yes. So we, we are still talking with the scientists mm -hmm. from the universities, even from uh, NASA, and we are discussing uh, uh, futures. So uh, we, 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 we have even a joint forum for young people mm. organized, not by NASA, not by the government, but by the Academy, uh, National Academy of Sciences in the U.S. So we have a regular uh, young people forum. Uh, we call it uh, new leaders in the uh -huh. future on, on space science. But the block is only from the top level government, from the Congress. Was that likely to change, you think, or only getting uh, worse? We hope it will no, not, not getting so much to, uh, not getting worse, but uh, has never been changed since uh, 20 years ago. So we, a lot of people, scientists from the scientific community, we push uh, from the U.S. side is also, also pushing 
to uh, to have uh, uh, to open it a little by little. Uh, for example, uh, there's a sign for collaboration uh, to improve it is uh, for smile collaboration. There are U.S. scientists to participate because this uh, when they participate, this is already Chinese European. Uh, collaboration and European uh, Space Agency has uh, 25 member states so this is a multilateral collaboration so when it's a multilateral collaboration the US scientists can participate I see so they are only blocking bilateral mm. so there's uh, always some, space that you can some, work with yes yeah. with the uncertainty of China-US relations that we have witnessed over the past two years, even the most trusted part of the relationship, for example trade, has become a challenge. Many people wonder if there's likely to be any kinds of Cold War or a Cold War related future for the two countries. Now, for space science, the biggest thing people have in mind immediately is the space competition or just even the space war mm -hmm. uh, during the Cold War era. Professor, how do you see that possibility? I don't believe it will go worse. Uh, the, there, there are some policy makers, they are blocking the trade, even trade between China and the U.S. And I believe it will hurt uh, both sides. Uh, the best way to develop yourself is market economy. It's opening up. And this has been demonstrated since the last uh, 10, 200 years. Yes. So if you go back to, uh, to close up yourself, even you are so advanced countries, you will lose. Uh, you will lose the international market, you will lose uh, even exchange of ideas and peoples, and uh, so this is not a good way to go. Mm. Uh, but you cannot stop uh, certain uh, politicians at this moment the, the, the probably they will use this as a weapon for their political purposes, uh, you never know. But in the future, in long term, this will, be, will not be like that. Mm. The common sense will prevail. Yes. On the other side, hu for human beings, outer space is our common asset. We, 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 we own it all together, all the human beings own together. So when we go out outer space, it is so natural to go together and to use it uh, together. So it is uh, a, a very uh, open area. So I believe for the future uh, in the space, uh, even with considering it can be used for, for defense, the technology can be used for defense, but, but you cannot block other people to, 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 to do or to develop themselves. You, you, you never succeed when you, if you want to block them and you derive your, same, your own and because of the world is so open and the internet, the information is exchanged so easy now and you cannot block that. But people so also talk about decouple. If you block your, yourself with a, even a, with a technically, hardwarely, and uh, you are stopping yourself. So I don't really believe that is the way to go. Mm. So you cannot decouple. In China, there are still a lot of debates about st state-owned vis-a-vis uh, private development. Uh, uh, so how will that debate impact on the uh, new space? Yes, uh, it's, it's, uh, the, when the new space, the commercial space is coming, it will affect the old space. The old space is the state-owned enterprises and uh, it will push them uh, to lower down the price and to have more efficient management and we can take the example of uh, color TV mm -hmm. television set in the 80s it was also always made by the state-owned electronics industry um, in enterprises China, in China and, um, and the government doesn't really want to encourage the private company coming in because uh, the state-owned industry is so important for China. We, we cannot lose them. We have to feed them. But the price of the color TV is so expensive at the beginning and the quality is not so good. And when the market is open, and you can see immediately the price is going down and uh, even the space industry is still there. They are making good product now. So don't be afraid of the commercial space coming in and they will change the com complete picture. Right. They will lower down price, increase the quality and help the space industry become 
uh, enterprise, uh, state-owned enterprise uh, getting more uh, efficient. Mm -hmm. Finally, before we go, Professor Wu, it's always fascinating to know what the real scientists are thinking, particularly the future trends. So if I ask you that question, Professor, what would you say? Where shall we focus our attention on for the near future? We are so much fascinated by the by the knowledge of the universe. In the past 20 years, there are so many information coming in, and most of the observations are coming from space uh, observations. So it's still changing. Yes. We, we re never really understand how much matters in the universe, what is a fraction of, uh, of uh, dark energy, and whether there is uh, 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 intelligent life there in the even in the in the in the galaxy in our galaxy uh, nearby even nearby so this is fascinating mm -hmm. and uh, the technology is developing so fast so we would like to say um, to solve all these problems uh, to answer all these questions and even in the solar system whether there's a life we don't really know mm -hmm. we know only on the earth but even on the mars we have not really discovered uh, life there mm -hmm. a very pretty even a very preliminary life. So all these are frontiers. Space pioneer talking about the future agenda and cooperation among countries about space. And that is all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us, World Inside CGTN, into your search engine, or check out our YouTube channel. Also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Sina Weibo. From Etienne Wei and everyone on the World Inside team, thanks for watching. Tune in again next time for more insights across China and around the world. Good night.